Hail unto thee, Macbeth, for great things lie in your future. Thou shalt be Thane of Glamis. More things will come to be Thane of Condor. All hail, Macbeth, for thee the greatest lies. Thou shalt be king of all of Scotland. Where did they go? I thought they were witches and now they're gone. Will I be king or Thane of Cawdor? Oh my god, what's going to happen? But King Duncan is alive. Oh! The witches appeared to Macbeth, telling him this great prophecy. They said that he will be king, however, Duncan is still alive, so is the prophecy really as great as the witches say? Or is it just a fantasy of Macbeth's mind? Oh, Macbeth! Terrible things lie in your future. You will kill the king, and also your best friend, as well as a bunch of random people, including women and children. Thou, Macbeth, you see this reality is not as great as you perceive, for your wife, Lady Macbeth, will persuade you to kill King Duncan. She will then go mental in the mind, and end up committing suicide, all because of you. Thou will not even be the end. Thou shalt turn upon all of your friends who you once place trusted and they trusted in you, and that will be your ultimate demise, Macbeth. Uh-oh. Oh. Why would I ever do any of those such things? I, I love my wife. I would never want her to die. I would never do anything that would get her killed or crazy or anything. And I would never kill any innocent people. And I don't even want to be king if that means I have to kill a bunch of people. That's, yeah. Great news! I'm going to be king of Scotland! But Duncan's king! Oh, well, I mean, something's going to have to happen to him, I guess. You'll have to kill him, you know. I can't do that. Well, I can't of course kill you him. can. No, I can't. What you're, do you mean you can't? Aren't being you a, a man? Of course I'm a man. Well, clearly not if you're too cowardly to do this. If you won't step up, then I will. Desex myself. Here, Lady Macbeth presents herself as a strong female character, almost taking the lead in the relationship over Macbeth the man. But is she really as strong as she thinks she is? And can she hold up to all the actions that her and Macbeth will do in the future? I can't sleep. I need a light. The blood won't wash off of my hands, and, and all the perfumes of Arabia cannot erase the smell. Oh, I need help, please, please. Please, I need help. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Oh, we killed Duncan, and, and we got rid of Nick Duff's wife and son. Oh, oh, and poor Banquo, what are we going to do? Oh, I need a light, oh, I need a light. After careful observation, I have determined that Lady Macbeth is suffering from a guilty conscience. Despite her rough exterior at the beginning, trying to convince Macdu Macbeth to kill King Duncan, she clearly doesn't have the stomach to do all this horrible actions. And she's suffering from an extreme guilty conscience, and because of this, she can't sleep. Is that a dagger that I see before me, with its handle stretched out to my hand? Come, dagger, let me clutch thee. I don't see no dagger. Where did it go? Was it even there in the first place? Or was it something trying to twist my brain to get me to do something I do not want to do? Was it the watches? Or was it, oh, I have no idea what it was. What am I going to do? In this scene, we can see Macbeth starting to question the appearance versus reality. Is this dagger that he saw a real item placed by the witches, or is it simply a figure of his imagination? This further leads into the question of the theme of appearances versus reality, when Macbeth himself feels the guilt of murdering Duncan. If Macbeth, the noble warrior, had known the horrors he would have to commit to achieve his goals as opposed to the appearance of greatness that the witches gave him, then perhaps he would not have done all that he had done. Gatsby! 
true what they say? Are you really a cousin of Kaiser Wilhelm? Are all of these rumors about your past true? Tell me! I'll tell you God's truth, old sport. I'm the son of some wealthy people in the Midwest, old sport. Whereabouts? Uh, San Francisco. Really? Yes, old sport. Yes, hello, old sport. Yeah, hey, uh, why are you kids are kind of sick again? Cough medicine? Well, old sport, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, you see, see, I've been having these, these, these cramps in the leg. Oh. Some, uh, pain killers. Oh, okay, yeah. Got I, any of those? I think I, I think I know what you're looking for, old sport. Just, just give me a minute. Thanks. And that's what you're looking for? Yeah. Have a good time, old sport. As we see in the first scene here, Chapter 4, Gatsby reveals to Nick his true past, the one that Gatsby has fabricated from his own mind. He tells Nick that he has earned all of his money because he comes from a wealthy family in the West. In the second scene, we learn the reality behind this illusion that Gatsby has created. He is actually an illegal bootlegger and has created his wealth not from inheritance, but from illegal means done by himself. Since we first met in Louisville when I was 18, and you were an officer in the Army, I've loved you ever since then. And what you've become, I've always been in love with you. And I want this to last forever. And don't let Tom stand in your way. I won't get it, Daisy. We'll be together forever. Jay, but it's so hot, and it's all so confused, and I don't know what to do. I can't say I've Daisy. never loved him. Come on, Daisy. You know you've always loved me. I'm the one with the money. He doesn't even have any real money. He's just a bootlegger. You're coming with me. Tom! In this scene, it appears that Daisy truly loves Gatsby for who he is, and that she genuinely wants to rekindle the love that they had lost in the past. In reality, though, when Tom comes along and shows his money, and is telling Daisy how Gatsby has none for himself, and he really is just a bootlegger, her true self is shown, and her corrupted immorality is displayed. Tom! 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 Tom, wait! Tom, wait for me! Tom! 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 Oh my god! Oh! Catch me! It is revealed that it was not in fact even Gatsby that was driving the yellow death car that was traveling through the Valley of Ashes. Although everybody's under the impression that Gatsby was the driver, including the police, George, and Tom Buchanan all believe that it was in fact Gatsby. However, Daisy was actually the one driving, and Gatsby simply takes the blame in order to protect her because of his overpowering love for her. This is one of the greatest illusions of the novel and possibly is the reason that Gatsby ends up being murdered in the end. College in Minnesota and worked there as a janitor to afford his tuition. Yet, when people ask where he was educated, he claims to be an Oxford man, saying that although he was born in America, he attended Oxford University as it was a family tradition. 
readers know that this is a lie. But Jay Gatsby's name is even an allusion to the man he only aspires to be. Born Jay Gads, it is only the appearance that he attended Oxford University, and not the reality that appears to be. You see, it is all a facade. Although Macbeth and the Great Gatsby were written in two distinct places and time periods, they prove the same reality. Not everything is always what it appears to be. Thank you.